<laughs> Can you give me a few more case studies on the more severe side? Was that you that was telling me the other day about an ACL injury? Uh, yeah, uh, well, Cody, um, mm -hmm. my brother, he played uh, Olympic volleyball, and shortly after I had healed my back, he came to me and uh, he, you know, he had, uh, he had, I think, like eighty percent of his meniscus had mm -hmm. uh, had torn, and he was um, moving laterally, and his and his knee would would open up, and uh, the meniscus would actually his come e outside of his knee. His knee would open up. Yeah, well, <laughs> when you move laterally, the the no. joint you know uh -huh. opens, and uh, the meniscus would would like pop out. And he said he could like flick it okay. on the outside of his knee. And uh, uh, his trainers and doctors were saying, look, you need surgery. You're going to miss probably about a year. Mm -hmm. And in six weeks, we had him back on the six court weeks. playing Olympic uh, Team USA Volleyball again. Just from from yeah. the, the the notes? What do you call them? The, the, the probes. probes. The probes. Yeah. yeah. Which we'll, you know, we're going to pull out in a little bit. But yeah. the, just from that. Just from that. And he probably only had 10, 10 sessions, I think. How long are the sessions? 30 minutes, 30 45 minutes. minutes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Wow. Any other more? Yeah. Um, so um, my dad had MRSA, and What's that? Uh, MRSA is a really bad infection, um, oh. and he uh, of of any part of the cell, uh, any part of the body, you can get MRSA, but um, it's um, it's a bacterial infection, and uh, he had broken his leg riding his bicycle, and he. Um, went to a doctor. He was kind of a charity case. He didn't have very good uh, insurance. They put his knee back together, and uh, they put it back together poorly. And uh, some of the places that they made incisions started to fester and get infection. And they, he called me crying one day and saying, "Hey, they're gonna chop my leg off." They said that if this MRSA, this infection, doesn't go away, uh, and they had been giving him antibiotics to to help it go away, and it was getting worse. And uh, he said, you know, if this doesn't start to go away in about a month or so, uh, they're, they're talking about amputating oh my, my, my leg uh, just above the knee. And so I had, uh, I had, I don't know, I had this thing for the equiscope. I had it for about four or five months at that point. I had learned how to use it. I packed it up, bubble wrapped it, you know, put it in a UPS box and sent it to him and taught him how to use it over the phone. And uh, he started treating himself, you know, about every day. And uh, in, I think it was about two weeks, two and a half weeks, he went back to his doctors and they go, uh, we don't know what you've been doing, but keep doing it because now the MRSA is gone and we can reset your leg. And um, so that that uh, that case is uh, one of my favorites. Wow. Um, oh, yeah, of course. And I actually have uh, proof now that, um, well, let me put it this way. My wife... Uh, went in for a mammogram and she uh, had a, a 1.7 centimeter mass found in her right breast at six o'clock and as a husband that's an absolutely I mean that's one of the worst pieces of news that you can get and um, I told her honey I know that this device is 100% safe it absolutely cannot hurt you and I've seen it you know facilitate healing for all kinds of things let me treat you and so I gave her sessions um, about four times a week four or five times a week 30 minutes 40 minutes at a time and within a within so I can I can relate to this story my, my mom's also had breast cancer grandma as well and it's it's a scary thing yeah um, sorry no that's continue right. I'm just thinking no. how much of a there's a there's so game many game changer out there. this could be for so many people yeah, yeah. Um, and so she had a, a previous mammogram, uh, January 2nd, I believe it was. And then her second mammogram was February 7th. And in that time, she went from having a 1.7 centimeter mass to they couldn't find it. And um, I will say it was not biopsied. So I you know, mm -hmm. can't tell you 100% what it was. But uh, I do know that her dad had passed away from, or I'm sorry, her, her uncle had passed away from cancer uh, a few years before, and her dad had just uh, about two years before had um, a kidney removed. So uh, cancers do run in her family. and um, Has this been tried on cancers? Uh, on malignant tumors? You know, um, it, I, I can't really say a whole lot about that and we never treat the cancer either we we're never treating the cancer it is absolutely illegal 
to treat the cancer unless you are licensed. Uh, what we are treating really? is, is the pain associated with your cancer. Um, and we help the pain dissipate and help. Um, there, there's you got to be really, really careful, honestly, with what mm -hmm. you say uh, when you're talking about cancers. Mm -hmm. And um, you can get in a whole lot of trouble for treating cancer. But one of the things that we are allowed to, to say that we're doing is we are treating the pain associated with your cancer. And um, do, do you know if it helps with um, uh, like treatment symptoms? You know, nausea or anything like that. Or may maybe not. I honestly don't know. I'm just thinking. So, like, like chemo <laughs> like symptoms? Like chemo, right. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I have not done a whole lot of yeah. cases like that. Uh, if, if, yeah, I haven't done any cases like that, to be completely honest. Um, I have mostly stuck to um, high-level athletes and my family members and friends. Yeah, um, knees. And... <laughs> for, the last, for the last eight years. Um it just recently became my, my business and I know I've studied the device, you know, and I've been using it for eight years, but, um, as far as like a clinical setting and, and, and giving people sessions and treatments, um, it's been, you know, it's only been about eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother Cody will be able to tell you a whole lot more about the clinical settings mm -hmm. and stuff, but, uh, can I ask what, what is it? What are the restrictions on treating cancer? Like, like, how is that? Just because I honestly don't know how is who who dictates who's allowed to to treat cancers or, or try uh, new treatments the, or the not. FDA. Got it. Yeah. Right. And uh, I mean, a lot of people think that the FDA is working to protect us. They are they're they're working to uh, to protect big pharma. Does this kind of fall in line with um? I, I forget what, what it's actually called, but there's kind of a movement of like allowing people to decide their own treatments like this. Mm -hmm. Like if there's say, you know, someone terminally ill and some uh, alternative medicine comes out that hasn't been approved by the FDA, but they want to try it. Mm -hmm. I think right now they're not allowed to, right? Is it, like, I think it's a, it has to be by an approved yeah, um, institution. You know what? I, I know, I do know that here in California, there's the California Kindness and Care Act, mm -hmm. uh, SB 577, I believe it is. And, um, it, uh, basically says that if a device or a modality has been deemed by the FDA, that it absolutely will not hurt you, uh, that anyone can use it on anyone. You don't have to be a licensed practitioner. And, um, so as long as the FDA has deemed it to be, you know, absolutely no adverse effect mm -hmm. on the body, then um, anyone can. But not with can. cancer treatments. You can't say that you're treating cancer unless you have, uh, generally, unless you're using chemotherapy uh, or you have a, a license to treat cancer. That's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> I feel. Uh, and it's not the same in, in other countries either. It's that's here. That's why a lot of people are going to these destination companies, going to Mexico and going to Germany and going to France, uh, going all over the world for alternative therapies, um, because we're just they're just not made available to us, uh, not not at least not uh, as on a large scale where people are can seek it out and um, here in America because mm -hmm. they want they've got a they got a real big industry going um, and, and it brings a whole lot of money in. And they, you know, they want to keep that industry growing. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.